Hello everyone and welcome to my first blog of 2023. First question of the day, where is the Grand Classic up to? So I had a bit of a stall on this about six weeks ago. Um, we've gone on a bit of a hiatus and it's going to delay everything further than I wanted. And I'm really sorry for that. It's due to two factors. The first was I had a bit of a breakdown as it were because of the various other problems that were going on at the time, particularly the postal strikes, which pushed me a little bit over the edge. I needed something badly from a supplier and it vanished into DPD's network and they messed me around. And every time I rang up, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we've got it. It's out for delivery today. You know, and at the end of every day, it wasn't there. And every next day I'd ring them up and go, oh, I don't know why it wasn't delivered yesterday. I don't know. And, and this went on for weeks and it really messed up everything. I'm still angry at DPD, not for the delay, not for the video, but for fobbing me off every single day. You know, it was not on. And when eventually my supplier had been pushing them, I'd been pushing them and they found it. And it just suddenly everything, the entire system changed, all the messages changed like one in the morning. It was obvious that they found it stuffed down the back of somewhere, you know, and instead of lying to me and saying, Oh, it's fine. It's coming out for delay. When, when clearly they didn't know where it was. You know, they should have just said that. But no, they didn't take responsibility at all. Really, really disappointed in that. You know, so DPD, honestly, awful, awful, awful service that. Furious. Anyway, this stressed me out a lot. And combined with the other problems, such as personal problems of uh, bills because I had to change supplier when my supplier went bust last year, beginning of last year. Ended up with British Gas. They sent me two bills. And of course they sent the second one in December for a ridiculous amount of money. And I didn't owe them that much. I owed them a lot less and we sorted it out, but it was a huge stress. And all of this is a knock on effect, as I'm sure you understand, of um, impacting my business and impacting my day to day running. I was extremely exhausted, extremely burnt out. And I just was unable to do the work. I was coming in, staring at it, and my, my mind wouldn't focus on it. So this is done. It's behind me. Picking up the Grand Classic today. And I've got the uh, the profiles exactly where I was at sort of six, seven weeks ago. So we've got some different EQ curves I was trying out because we I got the sound quite it's quite where I wanted it, but I was thought the EQ section wasn't working as I wanted it. It sounded a bit thin, a bit lifeless. So I'm beefing it up, basically. I'm adjusting the, the, the Q factors and some of the other factors with it and getting it really right. We can make the, the mids a bit more potent. The deep switch, just, it, it was just too subtle. It was like, that's not. So that's where I'm at right now. And I'm working on that today. I've been working this morning. I'm going to carry on. And my plan is to try and get this done by next week. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Like I say, I am behind. And I'm going to put some proper time scales up and send that as a message once I've worked out how to pull it all back together. But rest assured, I'm on it. <clears throat> One of the other reasons it's taken me so long for the Grand Classic to come to fruition is something I have to say I'm really grateful to you guys. Though. So thank you for supporting this because you have inadvertently fueled and funded me to push myself beyond my normal limits. So I want to show you something I've got here. I've prepared this here if we all can get the camera to focus on. This here at the bottom is a normal operational amplifier chip, it's normal op amp. This is what I have in the tone lord pedal. It's what I have in the quad screamer pedal. And it's what I thought I was going to put in the Grand Classic. But, wrinkle. First of all, I ran out of space because I wanted to put too many cool features in. I was promising you the world. I physically couldn't get it on the board. And I thought about a lot of options, but then I was pushed into shrinking down the chip size from this to this because these weren't even available anyway in the, the type I wanted. So I've never done surface mount, as we call it here. I've never done this. So this is where the chip is sat on the surface. So instead of having pins like this, which stuck in the board, sat on the surface. And that's why we've got these green adapters. They're just for development. You know, so that in the middle of the chip. And of course, the chip itself is actually like a tiny, tiny millimeter square in the middle. The rest is just a case. So there's no difference, but these are available and these were not. So I need the space and they're not available anyway. It's pushed me into this new type of soldering, which I've done and was surprisingly easy. 
and so you push this. Anyway, the soft switch turns out you can't get it in that size. The chip I need, it's this chip, a size again smaller. And in doing the soft chip, it was having some problems switching and I found out the transitions needed sharpening because of the way these chips are made for high speed digital. And it just was, the foot switch isn't fast enough, basically. Your stomp is relatively slow compared to like a, a CPU. Had to use these to speed it up. And these, if you can even see that, there's two on there. And they're like hair thin wires. I mean, the, compared to this with these pins and holes, we're now at this ridiculous level and I could solder these. Also this, while I'm at it, is the relay. I thought, well, you know, since we're going surface mount, let's have a surface mount relay too. This incredible level of um, tiny, tiny chip and tiny, tiny solenoids. But I would never have thought I could do that. And because of your support, you've pushed me into doing this. So this is super cool, which also leads me on to equipment. Because I'm, I'm going to solder these on your pedal by hand. However, going forward, that's going to be very time consuming. It's not realistic to keep that up, especially with needing to be more competitive in the market, the way the market's changing. <clears throat> so this is, this is uh, how to go forward. And I, I like the idea of doing things in-house. Personally, I want to do it all in here. I want to oversee as much of it as possible. I think that is synonymous with this sort of feel, that personal touch, having the creativity and the manufacturing right next to each other. For a long time, it's not been like that. For a long time, we've had this very idea of separation where you come up with an idea like on Kickstarter and then you launch it to China and they make it. You know, and that, that's been the norm. But with the increased cost of everything, with especially import export, with the time delays, it's suddenly looking a lot more viable to do things in Britain. So I thought about this and I thought, well, now we're on surface map, are there any options for machines that will help me? And so I was looking into a pick and place, which is a glorified sort of 3D printer type robot with an arm that just zooms around, picks chips up, looks at them in a little um, camera, rotates them and gets them right and then puts them on the board. And that way I don't have any of this tiny, tiny placing. Oh, that's fantastic. So I was thinking about that. And Lo and behold, another another thing happened um, at the weekend. This weekend gone. Friend of a friend says, oh, do you have any use for this piece of equipment? My cousin's throwing it out. It's a three-stage soldering conveyor. Now, I have to show you this as best I can from here. So I'm going to pull this camera up. This, this thing here, is a soldering iron. Circuit board's gone here are conveyed through three different ovens and come out the other side ready to roll. Ideally used with surface mount and a pick and place machine. So that's an expensive piece of kit that I have been gifted and I'm looking forward to, again, not the Grand Classic, but maybe in the summer, being able to make these pedals, continue making them in-house, because I'm going to make them in-house myself, but continue doing that. I don't have to think about shifting it abroad. I don't like the delays and the time and the issue with that. I can continue to buy the parts in here, have a machine that will put them on the boards, put the boards on my conveyor, have them done. Isn't that cool? How cool is that? I've also spent my Christmas money, as it were, and on a, on a cool piece of tech, which I've wanted for a very, very long time. So you see this behind me here, that green screen? And the thing above it, there's like 35 year old oscilloscope and SIG gen that I basically got out of a skip from the university when they were chucking them out. And they've done me well, but they're really quite basic and they're analog and they just show signals on two channels. This beautiful monstrous thing is a four channel digital storage oscilloscope. This enables me not only to look at four different signals at once and zoom in and out, make snapshots and print them. Also has software in it so I can do analysis, like spectral analysis of it and look at what the frequency content is. So I'm gonna be able to use this to make better pedals, basically. So I'm super excited about this. Uh, I'll be able to use it to test and improve the Grand Classic and others. I also was lucky enough to score a very, very, very cheap modern SIG gen on eBay for, uh, I didn't have much money left for that, guys. So this is a bit 
plastic Chinese, but it is apparently quite good, USB socket, and this is an arbitrary waveform generator, so obviously I can play guitar and watch the signals, but it's constantly changing. It's very hard to, to, to see what's happening because some of the changes you're playing and some of the changes you're turning a knob and you want to separate it. So this, I can create waveforms that contain all the correct signals, like hitting a power chord and having it sustain forever. And this will generate that signal and then I can get a constant signal going through the effect and then use the oscilloscope to uh, basically analyze and tweak and change it. So it's all go, my point. I say, I, I, I'm i sorry about the delay. It's the, it, it's, because there's a thing with burnout. Everyone thinks people burn out a week or lazy. Deep down, we do. We think this. We think, oh, how can this person work a 50-hour week? And this person work a 55-hour week? And this person work a, whatever hours? And this, this burnout person does 20 hours and, and they're, they're falling over at home and dying. Now, the thing is, when your life is good and everything is paid, we work more. You know, if you're doing a 40 hour week, for most of us, not all of us, for most of us, if we're doing a 40 hour week and we're sailing through it and having a good time, that means that our home life is solid, our bills are paid, our car is running smoothly, there's no holes in your roof. You're all right, you're coming home and you're putting your feet up, having some food, reading a book, and that's good. So you're, you're refreshed and ready for the next day. So of course you do 40 hours or 50 hours. It's easy. When you're doing a 20 hour week, it's usually or less even. It's usually because the world is falling apart. You know, my roof fell in before Christmas. That was fun. You know, tiles coming off it, nearly killing people in the street. I've got a wall at the side of my house that's falling down due to subsidence. The gas bills, the postal strikes, DPD losing my parcels. All of that took a huge amount of time. It was an unusual situation. And so, of course, burn out in 15 20 hour weeks and i'm not getting much done see how it works that's how it works so yeah if you see someone who's, who's really struggling to get into work usually there's a lot going on outside of work but i'm back and uh, i'm happy to be here so thank you very much for listening to my first long waffly podcast of the year i'm gonna put together some recording samples of this once I've made the tweaks and hopefully next week I'll tell you all about where I'm up to in more fun detail and less waffle. I'm also thinking about doing some other videos to do with uh, the business in general which I might do. We'll see how we go. Thank you for listening and uh, welcome to 2023. Let us hope it's better than the last few have been. <laughs> uh, so I shall see you, see you soon and I'll see you at the guitar shows around the UK if you're going to any, because I'm going to do as many as I can this year. So I hope I'll see you in person too. Ta-ta!